Hey everybody, Dave Pips, Pips and Paddle Papadopoulos. I think I got that right. Here, and as always, I've got my friend Greg with me today. How are we doing tonight, Greg? Just wondering how many OSHA violations that Earth City is uh, committing with their uh, mail system. I mean, alone we have the cart that's ready to skewer three young children that are riding the obviously very tempting and fun looking mm -hmm. ride of death. I mean, the benders, okay, you know what, little slack for them. They have some special powers. They can probably take care of themselves. But, you know, the regular kids, they shouldn't be on that thing at all. No, no, not at all. Although I can imagine it being uh, some sort of uh, thing done during, like, Victorian times for children to get down into the mine to work every day. Mm-hmm. But really, I mean, that whole thing is just one big lawsuit waiting to happen. Oh, very much so. And how are you tonight? I'm okay. Just going to give our background music a little bit more volume. Because it's a lower playlist. Not one that we use very often, but it was in rotation tonight. Uh, other than that, you know, things are doing pretty good, pretty good. Uh, we're uh, about to start homeschooling our son, so that, that's, that'll be interesting. At the very least, and through the 2021-22 uh, school year, so we'll see how that goes. Um, with Ontario and Canada being what they are and holding on to their COVID grudges, way more than the rest of the world is, uh, we decided it was time to pull them out and... And, you know, just see what see what we can do. Because he needs a little bit of one-on-one -on -one help, and the COVID restrictions are not giving him what he needs. And, well, I'm fairly certain that the next time we record, you're going to have me laughing at the fact that we pulled our kid out. And right that, right, right before the, they're about to, uh, you know, shut the schools down again. So don't be surprised, everybody, if I come on next week and say, hey, I was right. The schools were shut down. Yeah, well, over in Chicago here, there, it's been a bit of a drama because they've been um, apparently, like, they're telling teachers in Chicago not to say that they've had the vaccine so that they don't have to go back into school to work. Between that and uh, other things, yeah, it's been, it's just kind of crazy. No, it's all very nuts, that's for sure. I mean... They don't want, okay, I, I just don't get that. That's weird. But anyway, let, let's get off of the uh, depressing and on to the fun. Tonight, just for a little housekeeping, I'm just smoking a little Capri. It's a basket pipe that I got at the local uh, brick and mortar. And in it, I'm just smoking some Bolt uh, Burley. Uh, the blend's called Double Down. You can get it from smokingpipes.com. Greg, what do you got going on tonight as far as smoking goes? Yeah. Uh, I am tonight. I decide to enjoy some of my uh, pouch pipe tobacco, and uh, so I'm enjoying some uh, Lane's Ready Rubbed in this uh, uh, Shire uh, Hobbit pipe from uh, uh, a Cobbit pipe from Missouri Meerschaum. How how uh, how apropos your choice. I've actually been recently my I've been switch I switched ebooks or audiobooks and when I'm doing my chores and stuff around the house, I've been listening to The Hobbit. So it's a, it was a great choice on your part, even though you had no idea. Nice. Absolutely. I just smoked mine tonight too, but you know I haven't had a chance to clean it. All my all my extremely dirty pipes are at my workstation, ready to go, except it's been blocked off and I can't get to it. So who knows. Anyway, we are talking today about Avatar The Last Airbender, episode five, I believe. Five. Yes. And today, Aang and the gang go to the city of Omashu, which has 
as as we stated in the opening, one of the most interesting mail sy delivery systems in the world. And Very I mean, much. that thing looks like as much much as OSHA might might be against it. It looks like it might be more efficient than what we have. Right. Oh, for sure. Especially, especially during uh, Christmas when they were having all those like really bad uh, mailing issues. I didn't mind the mailing issues. I ended up with a free uh, box set season out out of that. It came to it came the next day after I returned it. Returned it. Yeah, with us, uh, we had some ornaments that came about like a month late. And I, I think one of them, one or two of them came like after the holiday, which, you know, wasn't too bad of it. Too bad, considering we usually have the tree up the majority of January, sometimes into February. Mm -hmm. But yeah, this is the latest of the one off episodes that we will get from time to time. And not only does it establish this really interesting mail system, but it introduces us to one of the most colorful characters, I think, in the entire series. The king of the city. He's not the king of the Earth Kingdom, kingdom but he's the king of this particular city. I guess he would be, in our terms, a mayor. Because mm -hmm. they do have the... Uh, overall in the hierarchy the overall king of the earth kingdom and it seems like the cities all have kings so that's kind of weird yes uh, he's uh, definitely one of the more uh, colorful characters uh, definitely entertaining uh, highly memorable like I he was definitely one of the characters that stuck with me from the little bit that I got to see of the show Yeah, and he's he's one of the characters that didn't get much screen time, but it was very memorable, though, because he's in that episode that we did, we're talking about today, and he's in I think maybe four to five more episodes total over the entire run of Airbender. Yeah, and. Uh... The cool thing, well, the interesting thing, too, about him is he's actually one of the few characters that was around when, uh, before Aang went away for 100 years. Yeah, because we, we get a chance to see young King Boomy in Aang's memory near to the beginning of the episode. And, and, and taking that into account, that they were friends before he went and was in the iceberg for 100 years, that means Boomy's got to be around 112 himself right give or take because we don't we were never established um what age he is but uh from the look of that flashback he at, in the flashback he's about the same age as ang so he's anywhere between 111 and say 115 he's doing really well for his age no kidding that's for sure i'd say aside from ang he's got to be the oldest character in this in the series right I think, you know, with this episode, like, it was mainly, like, a comedic episode, but, uh, I don't know, like, uh, it seemed kind of, uh, in some way, in some things, I wouldn't say, I don't know, it reminds me a little bit of, like, Money Python and the Holy Grail. Yeah, a bit, a bit. <laughs> with, kind of, like, with the three questions, but with, like, the three requests. Plus, you know, Boomy is, even when he is, like, trying to be, like, is testing Aang, he still is quite jovial and uh, goofy, even though he does have his uh, serious side. Oh, for sure. Yeah, so, three tests. Actually, when you think about it, he's actually he said three, but it's actually five. 
because do you like my outfit get the key get my pet fight a duel what's my name mm -hmm. so it was uh, unexpected but uh still he he managed to pass with with all of them but it's just uh i don't know it, it's fun i mean you have like you know you have the silly moments like with the the cabbage uh peddler my uh, cabbages who just cannot catch a break um he never does not through the entire series he's another that's another recurring character that you see like all over the place i think someone on the show just doesn't like cabbage which for the most part i i kind of agree with them it's very rare that i don't mind cabbage the only cabbage i like is in coleslaw because i like mm -hmm. coleslaw beyond that uh, cabbage is pretty useless to me mm-hmm Uh, let's see what else. Yeah, <laughs> and then you know, like the there's also the um, when a, after the feast that they have with oh, you know, it's always a, a turn in this episode because they they get caught for riding the um, the shoots and get sent to the sent to the king, and they're expecting you to get punished, but the king throws them off and says, we'll give them a, a feast. feast. And uh, and then at the feast, they, uh, you know, he's basically puts them in prison, but he's, they're not being, they're not being sent to the uh, bad, uh, bad cell or whatever. They're being sent to the newly refurbished one, which uh, put them might in, as well be. Put them in the newly refurbished chamber, chamber which used to be bad. Yes. And then... Poor, poor Sokka and uh, Katara get the, the, the creep uh, crystal put on them to make uh, Hank comply, but then at the end of the episode you find that basically it's actually rock candy, uh, made of rock candy. Yes, I, I have I have uh, some issues with uh, that whole rock candy portion because rock candy is not rock. It's not earth of any kind, but yet he can bend it. So that means, at least in the Avatar world, rock candy, at least in the Earth Kingdom, is in part made of dirt. At least it's edible in their version. And apparently, apparently it delicious. Good because, yes, apparently it tastes very good as well. But yes, it, uh, there's always one moment you, know, you think you're gonna, it's going to go one way, but then uh, it suddenly turns into another. Which, uh, I don't know, also kind of reminds me of just the, the ride that they, the initial ride that they took on, that, on the shoots where there was lots of twists and turns and unexpected jumps and uh, mm -hmm. escapes. And, uh, you know, sometimes I'm not a fan of twists. Uh, I mean, in the, like, I thought, uh, like, I wanted to like Iron Man 3 a lot, for example, but I felt like that had like too many twists. Uh, you know, we had um, the Flash season where they had Cicada for most of it, and then it was female Cicada uh, after that and, uh, and everything. But when it's done like this, I feel like it's appropriate and it's fun. You know, it's not some sort of like major thing but uh, there's like an actual it's not done for shock value it's done to elevate the episode mm -hmm. absolutely
But really, if you're paying attention, even if you're watching through for the first time, you and you pay attention, you, you notice that Boomy seems to recognize Aang like right away. Because he's sitting there on the throne and he cocks his eyebrow a little bit and goes, hmm. Right, and I feel that uh, at the at the dinner when he tosses the chicken at Aang and he stops it, like that's just all the confirmation for him. I think it, like what I, I do like the fact that there are, you know, we at least have this character that was around from Aang's past because he's lost everything else for the most part besides Appa and he's on his own but uh, at least now he has some sort of connection to you know what was there before right and it fits a lot with the the kind of you, you get a sense of the people that and likes to hang out around because like it reminds me a lot of his uh, um, airbender uh, monk friend that uh, made the the cakes only to yes only just them. throw at the other monks <laughs> yeah that's awesome right where and that seems to be a lot of like the philosophy for you know Aang where it's uh, you know you do right and uh you do good things, but uh, I, you know, you also should uh, take time to enjoy life and have fun, and to not take things too seriously. Oh, for sure. Take some take take things seriously when they need to be taken seriously, and then after that, just have fun with the rest of the time. Yeah, there's a actually. Now that I think about it, if there is one character that I, I think really kind of fits a lot with uh, Aang's personality it's uh, Goku from Dragon Ball Z yes Goku would be be the character from another series that would fit, fit like you could drop Goku into Avatar and okay Goku's here great now we get to see some Super Saiyan along with some Avatar State which yeah, begs the question, who would win, the Avatar or Goku? Well, I mean, Goku, just because Saiyans always get stronger with every fight. So I would say I would say him, but it would be interesting. I don't know, you could throw a young Goku in there, like from Dragon Ball. And I think that you could, uh, it would be probably around the uh, same sort of power level or whatever. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Goku might be a little bit stronger, but it would at least fit there. Not like the, like uh, Goku later on in Dragon Ball Z when he's like, like destroying these like, like on on Nappa, like destroying planets and stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, just you know, think about it. Thinking about it now, there's just a lot of this like lightheartedness. Uh, kind of the uh, goofy personality to kind of throw off your enemy and uh, which you know again is a nice contrast to Zuko who is all serious and is right now the antagonist but uh, you know we will see how his philosophy and personality changes as uh, the show goes on Yeah, if we're going to continue yeah. the Dragon Ball compar- Dragon Ball comparison, he would be Vegeta. Vegeta, Piccolo, one of the two, I, I would say. Uh, ah, you're right. Probably both. Piccolo more because Piccolo does join more easily to Goku's cause than Vegeta does. Yeah, Vegeta's still very much antagonistic to to Goku, even though they're on the same side. Whereas, like Piccolo, you know. At the beginning of Dragon Ball Z, they're a little bit on uneasy un- terms, but uh, after a while, they uh, 
really come to you know trust each other and our and our good allies. And so I would yeah I would put uh, Piccolo as the good uh, uh, comparison there. And then, yeah, and then we have the the challenges that uh, that Aang did. Um, they're all very unique. Uh, you know, one's more of like a, a physical puzzle. The other one is more of like a mental one. And then finally, you have uh, you know the duel. Mm-hmm. And. Uh, uh, the like the puzzle like the first one with the waterfall and the ladder and the key uh it's very interesting like it was a a clever idea you know because it it has this presented way that it makes you it fools you into thinking you know is the way to do it but you're not going to go anywhere if you if you do do it uh, like try uh, swimming up and climbing up the ladder just because the current's just too strong. Uh, so Aang has to think of an alternate way to, to solve that puzzle, uh, which, which I think is the basis of any really good puzzle, is that uh, the obvious way is rarely ever the solution. Yeah, sometimes the simple answer is not the right one. Right. And then there was the the fluffy puzzle with uh, the huge canine rabbit. Hmm. That thing is the stuff of nightmares. If I would have been watching Avatar when I was a kid, I'm sure Fluffy, the actual Fluffy, would have given me nightmares. Oh, for sure. I mean, it's up there with uh, with uh, Unagi, the eel from last week. Or the puppy monkey baby from uh, Mountain Dew or whatever it was, uh, Super Bowl commercial. <laughs> that thing gave me nightmares and I was an adult and then you get the and then you get the duel between uh, Aang and uh, Boomy which of course you know he has to choose uh, which one of the three that uh, you know you want to face and Aang thinks that he's being clever by choosing uh, you know the person that uh, isn't obviously a choice in the answer, but uh, ends up being the toughest challenge of the three. Because even though Boomy is over a hundred years old, he's still got game and can uh, more than fend for himself. Yeah, and at this point in the series, probably the most powerful Earthbender we've met. True. Very true. But that does make sense. I mean, if you have over 100 years to practice your art, you're going to be really darn good at it. Right. And, uh, yeah, he was just throwing earth like it was nobody's business. And I really enjoyed, uh, like, the quicksand parts as well. Yes, that was fun. Yeah. Overall, there wasn't much for uh, Katara or uh, Sokka to do, but you know they've had episodes lately. Like last episode had a lot with them, especially Sokka. Um, it was just another kind of like uh, episode for for Aang to kind of you know reveal parts of his past. 
Yep. It was definitely uh, another one of those world building background information episodes. Fun, mm -hmm. but informative. Right. And kind of, it's, let, you know, setting things up for uh, later adventures and uh, problems with uh, the Earth Kingdom down the road. Oh, for sure. But I must say, just to move uh, into the Flash for a little bit, since they have such a problem on that show getting rid of their characters, I think the Flash could benefit from the Avatar perspective of how they deal with the hugeness of their of their casting. Make sure maybe it's a little bit different for an animated series, but maybe not too. I mean, we have Boomy. He's in a handful of episodes through the entire run. They started doing something like that in the Flash with uh, with Snart before they moved him on to Legends. It's in a handful of episodes. He was a great recurring character, and uh, had they kept with that, it it'd been okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I kind of well, with the Flash. I kind of expected the the different rogues to to be like that between you know Snart um, Heat Wave Captain Boomerang and then uh, Weather Wizard and r really Weather Wizard is probably the only one that and even then like at most he shows up maybe like once a, a season maybe twice for the first couple yeah But yeah, like it, I'm, I'm just talking about their regular recurring characters, though, like mm -hmm. Cisco and and uh, all the ones that were added to Team Flash afterwards. Right. Yeah, it definitely suffers a, a little bit of bloat, and then it's hard because it's like, well, who do you get rid of? And it's like tough because you kind of like them all in certain ways. Oh yeah. But that's just a note for the Flash writers. Maybe over the next couple of seasons, they'll take that into account. For sure. But, uh, yeah. That pretty much covers this episode of Avatar, mm -hmm. making it a nice short episode for you guys. Um, before we sign out, since Easter weekend is coming up and will have been passed by the time you guys hear this episode or see this episode on YouTube, but got any any plans for Easter weekend? That's a good question. Like, uh, well, actually, last weekend, uh, my uh, wife and I took our son to uh, the zoo for the first time. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, which is nice because uh, our zoo... Uh, is in the same town as like my grandma and uh, so we were able to stop by and see her as well um, the zoo was a little bit disappointing because uh, it was just mainly like the outdoor attractions that were open right uh, like um, not attractions but displays and uh, I mean there were a couple buildings that were open but for the most part uh, a lot of the fun with uh, the zoo, which is the Brookfield Zoo of Illinois. Um, there's, uh, I don't know, there, and this is a zoo that, like, it, it meant a lot to me to take my son to because, like, it was the zoo that I went to growing up. And right. uh, that I would go to, like, every year. And uh, just, and, and I'll have more opportunities to take him because, like, we have a, um, membership there now but uh and, and so that was nice like just being able to walk him around and show him the different animals uh even though that there, there weren't a whole lot of animals they did have some uh they have like this dinosaur thing going on right now where they have <laughs> giant dinosaur kind of like animatronics around the park uh which you know is cool you know it it relates uh a, a bit. I mean, it doesn't quite 
fit the same uh, kind of role as like an animal that's alive right now. But uh, right. still, like you're a kid and you see you know, there's this these two Tyrannosaurus Rexes that are roaring every minute and moving a bit. So, you know, it is cool. Um, and the, again, there were some animals that you could see, like we saw some bears and uh, bison, basically anything that could handle the cold or, you know, the kind of like chilly, you know, spring type of weather, they were out there. Uh, so that was nice. Uh, and we did that with my mom because she wasn't going to be able to make it uh, for Easter weekend. So, you know, oh, now that I'm thinking about it, I just realized that Friday is going to be Good Friday. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're not really, we don't necessarily have much planned. I think we're just going to kind of put on a uh, first Easter <laughs> type outfit for, for Milo and uh, maybe call it that. Uh, you know, like we've done kind of Eastery stuff in the past. Like I would do a couple, uh, like when I was at my church, uh, I, you know, before all this stuff happened, mm -hmm. I would sometimes volunteer for like Good Friday services to run camera, um, maybe do Saturday or Easter Sunday services. But I've kind of stepped back from that now with uh, uh, you know, with everything going on with COVID. And, you know, I'm not the most paranoid of, uh, about COVID like some people, but uh, still, I don't want to, you know, take too many unnecessary chances. Right, right. Uh, you know, the whole, you know, definitely, you know, believing in, like, personal responsibility and... Uh, But I, I'm looking forward to eventually a point when we can start taking my son to church and uh, letting him enjoy that. Maybe we'll put on, uh, well, we discovered that my church actually does uh, children's church streaming. Or like they have uh, services just for like little right. kids. Oh yeah. So Sweet. yeah. So we'll uh, probably put like that on for him and uh, you know, he'll, stare at it and kick like he does with everything how about you well um we're looking at a nice quiet weekend i mean as i alluded to earlier in the episode ontario is in canada anyway one of the most restrictive provinces um so there's not really much we can do we got a easter dinner planned like just you know family like us Maybe my mother-in-law, because she lives alone, so she might come over. Because the way the restrictions work here is if you live alone, you are allowed to go and visit one family unit outside of yourself. So she'll probably be over, assuming my wife remembers to invite her. I have to remind her. Um, but that's generally it. Like, football ham, you know potatoes you know the standard you know Easter dinner just the family um, I think we're gonna do the traditional Easter basket stuff but on Saturday instead of Sunday because uh, currently the way things sit for churches and whatnot here in where I'm at is they can open have like if you've got the room to do it, 25% uh, capacity or 30%, something like that. Now, here's the hilarious part about it. Just as COVID was hitting, we were doing renovations on the church, like putting on additions to, to make the church bigger. And throughout the time of COVID, uh, we ended up getting it finished for the most part. So the whole building is usable. So, 30% capacity actually accommodates the entire congregation. Nice. So, it's not all in the uh, it's not all in the sanctuary, mind you. There's overflow rooms because 
you know, they're, they're, we we stream the services just like everybody else is doing for the ones who can't make it or don't right. want to make it because, you know, COVID. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, it works out that you know if if everybody wanted to be there, everybody could be there for us. So it's nice in that regard anyway and they're still doing uh, back to doing two services like two morning services and whatnot. we were just starting to get back to the evening services when we got locked down again before Christmas but uh, yeah it's it's all cool but yeah that, that's it nothing super special and I hope you guys out there listening had a great Easter managed to do something or nothing yeah you know that hopefully you had a good weekend you know at the very least you had a good weekend yeah yeah Yeah. and and thinking about that like i am excited for the day that uh you know i'll actually be able to do something like an easter basket uh um hiding easter eggs around the house uh that's you know something that i don't really remember doing all that much but i uh i like that idea a lot and uh it just seems like fun to me and uh you know i i would en- i would enjoy doing that with uh with him yeah we tend we typically do that we don't use actual real eggs though we, we get the little the, the plastic ones that are about the size of a real egg and we put candies in them and whatnot so that way if they do do, do not get found and we forget where they are you know they don't you know stink the house up after they go bad right uh, and actually and actually that's what i was thinking <laughs> was uh doing it with uh, the plastic uh, Easter eggs and filling it with like M&Ms and Reese's and whatnot. Yeah, that's that's the way to go. That's for sure. All right. So again, everybody have a good weekend and we will, you know, sign off and see you in about a week. But if you want to get in touch throughout the week, you can always follow us on Twitter. I'm at Dr. Alien 201. The show, of course, is at Syndicated Pipe. And Greg is at the underscore Badger Piper on Twitter. Where else can they find you, Greg? On Instagram, I'm uh, just the Badger Piper. Uh, I also have a uh, WordPress blog uh, that I haven't been updated updated in a while, just because I've been kind of busy learning the bad pipe. Uh, but that is at the, uh, the Badger you can kind of read um, my stuff on there. And if you just want to go old school and send us an email, you can do that at reverseflashtime at gmail.com. Our ever reusable, recyclable email address. Always be yes. the show's email address, no matter what we call it and what we're doing. And with that, we will wish you good smokes, great entertainment, and we will see you next one. Chat with you later.